Hey everybody, it's Sean from DelistedGames.com, finally taking a look at Game Room. And I might have to stop here in a second and adjust the audio. This game is incredibly loud and overwhelming with sounds. <laughs> uh, let's see, I'll let the, the intro play here. Um, let me give you a, a little background on the Game Room service, the Game Room platform. Uh, was released um, on Xbox 360 and PC through the Games for Windows Live program uh, March 24th, 2010 in most territories. Uh, let's see, it does still load up, which was one of the things I was initially worried about right off the bat. Uh, it is gonna sit here for a minute. It's a little faster than it was the first time I loaded it up. I've re-downloaded all of the game packs, and unfortunately, if you, you can only access... Gosh, hold on. I'm hearing myself. Um, you can only access the games that you had purchased. And of course, since Game Room's been shut down, there's no way to purchase any other games. So for me, out of what, I think there's 189 total games released, 189 games released between May 5th, 2010 and December 22nd, 2010, uh, I own two of them. And I'm not very good at either of them. Uh, and right now what this loading bar is doing is loading the games from all of those game packs. Uh, looks like there were 11 game packs, each one 12 to 15 games each. And most notoriously was the very last one, which people data mined uh, to and to see that it included Konami's Sunset Riders, which was one of the latest arcade games that was released through Game Room. But that was never unlockable. You could never buy Sunset Riders. So at the time, in December of 2012, 2010, sorry, uh, we were all waiting and waiting and waiting for Sunset Riders to be available, and then it wasn't, and then Game Room shut down. Um, pretty unceremoniously. I, I don't remember it at the time because I wasn't paying attention to this stuff at the time like I am now, uh, but it was very... It, it was not announced, and it, I don't even know if it was planned. Um, from what I could dig up, it was March 4th of 20. 15 that people started uh, questioning, uh, bringing up more errors than usual, trying to get logged in, um, trying to purchase anything or load content. There we go, finally. Game room service is not available. Uh, we'll, we'll run into this a lot in this video. Most of the features are gone. Uh, you can see it just now loaded my arcade. And my avatar should be, yeah, teleporting in here. It's kind of a cool effect. They did some some fun things with avatars. Um, so I, you can go to the friends list, but you can't view any details in the game within the game stats between friends. Of course, you can't get to the store, challenges, leaderboards, news. Uh, if I hit X, the showcase arcade, not available. The videos that you're seeing over here are pulled from the game packs that I have downloaded onto the, the console. So I don't know if that's actually a video or if it's like a demo run of the game. Like if it's actually emulating that right now over there, but you just can't interact with it. Um, so we can't get to my profile. Um, as you can see, I'm level one. I've played 19 minutes of Finalizer. Um, I was a big fan of Game Room, just not a big supporter of it. Um, and it seems like that uh, was a good thing. Let me see, where is it? Uh, there's a stat here. Uh, it should be noted that buying all of the games available, it will run the user $531. Uh, so yeah, I never, I never bought that many games through Game Room. But I love the idea of a virtual arcade, especially one that you get to like decorate and lay out and design. Um, that's really cool. Um, let's see, my collection, this is everything I've got. Um, two games, River Raid and Finalizer. I don't even know why I bought Finalizer. I had never played it or heard of it before it came out in Game Room. 
Uh, and then River Raid is a favorite Atari 2600 game of mine, but I'm just completely terrible at it. I, I can't even last the two minutes in it to get the the one medal, which I don't think you can get because it requires uh, ranked play. We'll try. I won't make it, but we'll try. Um, one of the interesting things they did with the console releases is put them all in a fake cabinet like this. As far as I know, uh, these games were n never playable, even like a demo kiosks or anything uh, like this, sitting in an arcade cabinet. But to make it interact with avatars, they had to have everything like the same height. Um, so let's go to my arcade. The, one of the cool parts about Game Room is that you have this uh, three-level ar virtual arcade with four rooms on each floor. Uh, and I, I tried to go through and, and put in as many things as I could. Um, so you can see there's different themes. Uh, this is edit mode, so we're like zoomed in here. Uh, that background is very Double Dragon intro. Um, they had all kinds of little objects and different themes that you could put in. Uh, nothing that's interactive. It's just kind of for decoration. Uh, and you can put in all of the arcade cabinets here as well. So we can stick another River Raid machine in here. And then uh, switch mode. And now all we can do is go in to the games themselves. And I'll, I'll scroll through at the end through all the items just uh, for, for posterity's sake. Uh, to They each have a description and unfortunately an annoying sound effect that goes with them. It's part of what gets so overwhelming here. Um, But let's see, I'll just go through each of the room themes here. So it's kind of fun. If you want to play arcade, all your arcade games on a pirate ship, you know, you can do that. Uh, there's an Aztec room. Graveyard room. As far as I know, um, I obviously didn't put enough time into this to unlock everything. There are some themes and objects that I don't have unlocked, but it says that in the store there were uh, arcade items, like more decorations like this that you could buy or unlock. I don't remember if there were any uh, licensed ones, like if you could get Activision, Atari, and Television, Konami stuff. Um, you know what's ridiculous about this laundromat theme is that there are like seven different kinds of garbage cans. There are like five different kinds of laundry detergent and bottles that you can put down. But there's no slot that you can put in a vending machine. There is a vending machine and a soda machine, but each room has different size slots and there's usually only two big slots, which is where you would put a vending machine or something. Uh, it just doesn't doesn't quite make sense. I guess with the limitations of having to potentially fit 189 arcade machines in here, they kind of had to go with this slot system, not let you individually place them. That's sort of what uh, newer offerings like, uh, oh gosh, what, what was it? It was called New Retro Arcade. I forget what it's called now, but there are several offerings now that do this kind of thing. Uh, you know, totally illicitly letting you put in cabinets and, and art and decorations of all kinds of licensed stuff. Um, these were kind of cool. There are themed rooms for each company. I own nothing for Intellivision except for this, uh, this little display kiosk. Um, and Atari, I only have River Raid, which is also falls under Activision, so I've got it in the Activision room. But look at this room! Man, this pitfall room. Oops, wrong button. And your avatars, and apparently the, the Chrome Studios developers uh, put their own avatars in here, which I don't remember ever seeing, but they might be, since the service is offline, that might just be like a placeholder, like default avatars just to have some activity in here for him. Um, yeah, lava lamp. And television kiosk. Uh, 
let's see. I didn't go into the Konami one. Of course, I just have Finalizer in here. Uh, and then in between most of the rooms, there's this video wall, which is the same thing we saw in the main menu. Originally, when the game was online, there would be button prompts down at the bottom to let you... I, I think there was one that said, like, play this game, because right now that... that it really looks like it's compressed like a video, but it might be running the game there. I don't know. The audio sure is out of whack on, but like from game to game that it plays on this video. Um, but there used to be a button that would let you go demo it each um, So you would download the pack that had like 12 to 15 games in it, and then you'd be able to play each one for 10 minutes for free, not earning any progress on medals or any achievements or anything. Um, no I think it may, might have given you one ranked match to play. Um, the idea being, like, you want to improve your time or your performance on the world leaderboards, and so you would buy it. Um, and there were options, I think, here to just go see that pack or see the other games that are in it. So, there's a few that it's pulling out. Intellivision Casino. Wow. Uh, let's see. I think that's mostly it. Um, you can view your medals. I must have played the demo versions of Road Fighter and Lunar Lander. They're both from different packs, and I think they're from different packs than the two games that I own. And the very first time that I loaded this up and went in here, I got this message, but then I still had the option to play the trial, and it still had 10 minutes on it, and since I have not been able to get that option to pop up, so buy play session, buy full game, and they're grayed out, of course, because it's not connected to the server right now. Um, what was interesting was you could spend, or is it, I think, 40 Microsoft points? Um, single play. 40 Microsoft points equated to about 50 cents. So if you wanted to, you could just play the game once for 50 cents, 50 real-world cents, and not buy it. Uh, if you want to buy the game, it's $3.00. Or 240 Microsoft points, if you remember back in the day of Microsoft points. Make sure this is still recording okay. Yeah, it's looking good. Um, so I got a little bit of game history on these two, but it's the only thing you can look at. I can't even move the cabinet around. <laughs> but Finalizer and River Raid we can get to. Okay, and of course, if you wanted to, you don't have to even go into your virtual arcade and find where you put that. You could just go right from the main menu to whichever game you want to play. Uh, we can't play ranked mode anymore. Can't view the leaderboards. Very detailed history. And then controls. Hmm. And you can't remap them. So, oh, this one does have dip switches. Bonus man. I'm going to put it on default. And then once it loads up, uh, it's saying left bumper is insert coin. I think that did it. I'm not hearing it. Uh, and I think I probably got this game because of, of the screenshot. Welcome to the Earth. And then you're flying over like an atlas. And you turn into a mech slowly, which is pretty cool. You have a shield, so you can like block bullets fun. Oh, I shot the power up. Like I usually do. And now we got a robot torso. Now 
Now we have this weird robot shooty arm thing. Oh, and I got hit. Beautiful. That didn't last long. And I missed the power up. Beautiful. I tell you, it's not my favorite shooter. And I shot the power up again. It's an interesting one. Oh, it was saving, apparently. And now we're extra screwed because I died. Uh, yep, all right, beautiful. I am not here to show expert play of this game. I'm just here to show what this service was. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, no, I don't think I'll continue. Exit, and it tallies up your score. Apparently I did the first two in ranked play. Um, so the only thing left that I can actually earn is the, the time spent. Um, all of the achievements, let's look at those now here. Spend four hours in your arcade. One six medals, one two medals of each type. Um, Placed unique items. So none of the achievements are tied to the games themselves. They're all... You could earn them from playing any of them. Win a num certain number of medals, spend so much time in your arcade. It's interesting reach level, which you would get from buying and placing things. So, yeah, literally, I like shiny things. Um... It's cool that you could earn all of these from any assortment of games, but I do like achievements that are based on the game themselves. It's always given me something extra to, to aim for in games, especially old games like this, like, that were never designed with something like this in mind. All right, uh, game history of River Raid. And instructions. And controls. Oop. And this is cool. We've got the, um, the 2600 interface, like the actual hardware interface. You can even put it in black and white mode if you want to. You can change the difficulty. You can change the game mode. And then reset, which is the same as hitting start. And I'm remembering that the Xbox 360 just really had a junky D-pad. I'm not great at this game, but I will say that a few deaths have been because of this D-pad. Not just because of me. You can shoot the fuel. I'm not going to make it. shoot the fuel, which is a little bit like shooting your own um, defender things in asteroids, or space invaders, whatever they call those things. I'll try to stick, but that's really not much better. I say one of my favorite 2600 games, but it's it's not like any 2600 game I spent a ton of time playing. We usually had boxes full of cartridges from yard sales for like a dollar, and so I probably just blasted through everything that I could, you know, play it for about... Come on. <laughs> play things for about 45 seconds and then turn it off or... Years later, when I was on an, an NES, you know, being at my grandparents' house with who inherited the 2600 and being bored and going, all right, fine, I'll just play River Raid for two more minutes, which ironically is longer than I can play it for here. Nope, that's not going to work either.
an hour. Can you imagine playing River Raid for an hour? I can't. Maybe someday. So it does look like I could still unlock a couple more achievements. Um, maybe one more. Uh, there, you could definitely keep spending time playing in here and get those um, time-based achievements. It's really, that's about all that we can look at in here. Um, and that's mostly what it was. Uh, this always freaked me out that they put basically a Genesis six button controller, like no other controller looks like that, uh, but they never released any Genesis games in here. Um, let's see, we can go through the themes real quick here. I tried to put in one of each one, but there's actually not enough rooms to put in one of each type of room. Which I guess is a, a limitation, but also kind of cool. Like, everyone's arcade really would be different because you can't put in one of everything. And some of this stuff unlocks at level 12. I'm level 1, so I don't think there's a chance for me to ever unlock the heavy metal stage. And then there is generic different colored rooms. And then a tiki room all the way at the end. I'm not sure why it's stuck at the very end. Oh, it's alphabetical. Uh, and there were mascots. I think mine is flying around here somewhere. Um, if you bought a game or a game pack, I for forget if it was games or game packs specific. Uh, this one is, it must be for the game because this is for finalizer. Maybe it's saying one of 10 mascots selected because you can only have 10 of them in your arcade and every game had one. If you bought a game the first week, I think that it was on sale, you would get a mascot for it. So this little guy, there he is. It's just a sprite from the game that flies around in your arcade. It's kind of cool. I just don't care about Finalizer that much. Uh, my collection. So, what wrestling game was that? Why didn't I buy that one? Anyways, um, there's also decor. So, this would be the point if you want to uh, tune out. I'm just going to scroll through and show off everything in here for, for completion's sake. Here go all the items. Uh, thanks for watching, though. If you tune out now. Some of the stuff I do not have unlocked. You can look around a little bit at it. Some of their descriptions are pretty good, like have you displayed your Atari 2600 today? Some of them are just lame. A bamboo torch with a colorful macaw. A bar stool. <laughs> I'm never going to know what their description of barbed wire is. Like I said, so many different kinds of laundry detergent. Oh, that car seat was pretty cool. I have had Game Room downloaded onto my Xbox 360 for a while. I don't know if they removed the ability to re-download it, um, but I was able to queue up the game packs just just before I recorded this. So here in July of 2020, the game packs were still able to be downloaded. So you should still be able to re-download Game Room itself. And then if you did buy any games, you should be able to play them still and put in progress towards hours and hours of playing the two games that you bought. Or maybe that's just me. People were iterating on this pretty quickly. Even on the Xbox 360, there was a an Xbox Live indie games release uh, that has since come to Steam that was an arcade management type of game. So you were running the arcade. You didn't play the games, but you did the same kind of layout, like 
putting in the games and adjusting the prices on them and the, the difficulty and stuff. Um, that was cool. I think I only played like, the trial of it. I, I didn't buy it at the time. But I think it's still on Steam. And it, it's not um, official games or anything. So. On Steam, though, you might be able to mod it and put in your own games. It'd be kind of kind of cool. This open rubbish bin is shiny and new and ready for your rubbish. What a description. Uh, since there is a lot of music in this, I think I'm going to try and do a, a soundtrack series. So that might be coming up. That might be next in the, the list or re of recommendations. If you're watching this uh, sometime after I've recorded it, which would be any time after I recorded it. I'm sure taking a long time to scroll through these items. At least there was a lot of stuff to put in. I'm not hearing it, but I'll bet you're hearing an overwhelming cacophony of sounds. Ooh, especially that. Wow. I could probably have had room to fit another whole game on here if every object didn't also have a sound effect that had to play. It's a really great idea. I would love it if something like this could happen today. Um, not in the quasi-illegal fashion of some of the stuff that's on PC where like like a legit way to buy and, and play and still collect and organize real arcade games. But as we know from delisted games existence, uh, licensing would just be ridiculous. Especially the, the ongoing licensing to keep it going. And then it gets bigger and bigger, and it gets more and more bogged down, and like this game, it, it takes two minutes to load at the beginning. So, there's all the items that I have. That's all the decor. That's all the stuff. I think that's about it. I'm gonna, um, options. Game room. Got a little history on game room, and sort of like a manual, really. Still has the Microsoft Points logo in it. It was before they made that change even to real dollars instead of obfuscated points. Mmm, check out the video wall for advertisements. Uh, it does have a rewind feature. I didn't hit the button. And it's got a little bit of uh, history on arcades and then each console. And the credits. I'm gonna turn my mic off and I'll leave you with the credits then. Thanks for watching and checking out Game Room. You can find out about more about this and over a thousand delisted games now at delistedgames.com. And check out the rest of the YouTube channel for more hands-on videos like this, a poor playthrough of <laughs> some games, and uh, assorted trailers and footage, um, other features and stuff that, that we've done over the years. Thanks for watching.